It is a new week of game prep. Just last night, I found out my game assignment for the divisional round in the NFL playoffs. Sorry I'm wearing this robe. I am freezing, like two degrees. At least the sun is out today. Anyways, so ignore the robe. I am like up and at them and working. In fact, today I'm catching up on like tax stuff, going through my mail, writing check. Also, I am really kind of day one post peel and God, I look really pale. Um, my face feels great. I have just sunscreen on, I've done the post care stuff, but I'm not red, I'm not flaky. If anything, my skin feels kind of glowy and tight. So um, stay tuned. I'm very excited to see. There will be a shedding, I'm sure. But yeah, so there's an update with the peel. It's going great. My game assignment is Tampa Bay at Detroit, which is really wonderful. For one reason, it's inside. I was about to get the Ravens game that would have been freezing like in the 20s in Baltimore. And I could have gotten the Bills game with my dad. It's Kansas City at Buffalo. And that would have been a lot of fun to do another game together and to like go on the road, I think would have been fun as well. Um, to like get a big dinner in Buffalo the night before or something. But man, I just feel like I've paid my cold weather game dues. I'm kind of kind of good, I'm good on that. I have like a lovely game experience inside Ford Field. Um, and just get a focus on the game and not the elements because that makes the whole day different for me, for players, for everyone covering it. So this is good news. There's no flight out that night that could get me to London. I looked at every option. And so I have to fly out Monday and Monday afternoon at that, connect to Chicago. And I don't land in London until Tuesday morning at like 5 a.m. I also wanna show you just how I start my game prep from total scratch. Um, like literally late last night, got the assignment because the wildcard games finished up. So here's what I do. So I just start a document for every team. So here's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I do big picture last week where I'll do like a blurb based on what happened last week in their win over Philadelphia. And then I'll do like any comments from the coach throughout the week. So this page starts like this. This will end up being like four or five pages typed. Um, and then I go through offense. So I always just break it down by position group, offense, O-line, quarterback, running back, tight end, wide receiver, then OC. So any comments he makes throughout the week and then stories. So anything that's like not really position group specific or like maybe it's just a bigger picture story that would go there. And then post, I kind of come up with some questions that might work post game. Um, like, let's say someone's close to a record. Like, maybe I'd put that there. Just things that I want to remember while I'm preparing my post-game interview. So I just want to make sure as I'm prepping and everything's coming to mind that I am thinking, okay, what would be a good post-game question? What would move the story forward? And anything that comes to mind as I'm prepping all week to just jot down there. You never know. It could come in handy. Because um, at the end of the game, like, it's really hard to recall a lot of things that you read throughout the week because you get so caught up in the game and I never feel like my brain's as sharp at the end of the game. I'm giving myself the best opportunity to succeed for the post-game interview by kind of thinking ahead. My face is successfully falling off. I'm molting. I'm molting like a snake. This actually isn't so bad. I just took little um, like eyebrow trimmers and trimmed off my falling skin, but I have very good news look we got here my passport with my visa in it and i'm laughing so here's my visa so now when i go into the uk i just march right in like oh will this be so nice i'm legit i don't have to worry about you know what do i say when i go through customs like oh i'm just visiting even though i like kind of live there um but i'm laughing because my uh description says I am an international sports person partner, <laughs> which really very specific, accurate description. I am an international sports person partner. That made me laugh. Good morning. It's Thursday, which means I'm three days. Wow. Three days past my peel. And I'm not sure if you can really see all the flaky flaky. It was pretty bad yesterday. It was pretty flaky, as you saw. Um, but as I'm putting like the hydrocortisone post-treatment cream on and stuff, it's better. So I am 
excited for it all to slough off which I think will still kind of take some time. So anyways, today I have a lot of on-camera work, both with Sky in London and with BetMGM. So I'm filming everything from home, which is great, but I need to get my face right. Um, I think this camera does me more favors than it looks in person, but I thought it's a great time too to show you the new makeup that I told you I got at Sephora in New York. Radiant concealer, medium buildable coverage, 16 hour wear, hyaluronic acid, golden vitamin C, collagen, niacinamide, boost hydration, all this stuff. So color six and a half medium. In theory, when my skin is flawless after this peel, I think I can get by with just doing some of this and no foundation. And next I'm gonna do the foundation. I'm wearing color six neutral, which we were between um, this and one up. And I highly suggest going in to ask the makeup artist to try it on you. All day long, they are playing with these colors. They are, a lot of them, I think especially at Sephora, are trained makeup artists. And if not, maybe ask, be like, is there someone who works here who's really comfortable with the Charlotte Tilbury or whatever brand you're working with? But this lady nailed it. I'm not supposed to pull it, but it's so tempting. It's like a snake. Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I like to pride myself on doing makeup really fast. So this is a full face of glam. I think I'll be doing the whole thing in under 10 minutes. I wish bronzer in medium. Even in a turtleneck, you get that neck, even if it's flaking off. Yeah, this is pretty gross. Kat Von D blush in shade Por Vida. It is really pink. The Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wand in Pillow Talk. And I'm gonna do two dots. Two dots, I'm gonna hit my eyelid too. Okay, let me first kind of work that in on the eyelids. That looks so pretty over the highlighter. So I definitely like going in that order. Finishing off with eyes, this is the NARS palette in Endless Nights. Look at these gorgeous colors on the whole crease. And then I'll kind of clean up up here. Do me fast. Okay, and then there's a champagne color in here. I'm gonna try to get a bit more on the lid. Got this brow gel from Glossier, the boy brow. So it's kind of a cult favorite. Control, not just the color. Okay, so I do kind of a slop job and then I clean up. Um, little eyeliner, this is the L'Oreal Infallible. Very heavy for nine in the morning. And maybe the best for last is the same mascara I've been wearing. I started wearing mascara, L'Oreal Voluminous. Boy, is she nice. MAC Lip Liner and Whirl. Ah. That's it. Okay, so here's my little setup. I have my ring light tripod. I've got this little light. I've got my script up. Here is my final Makeup look, trying so hard to keep the face on the face. So we just finished up some of our Sky Sports stuff, shipped that off to London. Now I'm doing the BetMGM show for YouTube, which will come out Friday. All right, cool. When do Dark Horse first? Three, two, one. For my Dark Horse dividend in the divisional round, I like the Packers plus nine and a half. They've won seven of their last nine games. Jordan Love has thrown 21 pass touchdowns and just one interception in that span. Also in that span, when pressured, he's second in the league in yards per attempt and has the best passer rating. In fact, his passer rating last weekend in Dallas is top five all time of any quarterback in playoff history. He's the real deal. San Francisco has beaten Green Bay their last four playoff meetings, but Jordan Love will be the difference for these Packers, or at least keep it within nine and a half. For more of our picks, catch Inside the Lines. Jared Goff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Three, two, one. For my divisional round prop, I like Jared Goff to have got this big old boy. I'm going to mix it with some white onions. Simple, and then I'm going to do an over easy egg, maybe two, and let that get really runny on top. Eggs and turkey and chicken are just kind of my go-to's. I'm trying to get so much protein in. I'm trying to get my body weight in grams of protein every day, even non-workout days, which today is. Today's a cozy and work day. Those in there. And I couldn't find any butter in my mom's house. 
I usually like to just overdo it with the butter. Okay, I got two eggs cooking. I ended up putting some apple cider vinegar in here just to give it so much flavor and juiciness. We made it to Detroit. This is such a beautiful airport. I will be right back here in a couple of days to fly back to London. But for now, just glad to be on assignment for my next game. Face isn't doing so great. They told me that the peel could cause breakouts and that is exactly what happened. So breaking out here a little bit, not ideal. Um, but good thing my game's on radio. I look like a mob wife, just how I like it. This is the reality of what it looks like being on the road. I really just end up sitting in a hotel room bed. Um, and this is kind of a weird hotel because it's the Westin in the Detroit airport. So there's no like sunlight. Like outside my window is just like the lobby and then goes right into the airport. So it's nice because I get to really focus on work where I feel like all week when I was at home, I was kind of pulled in a bunch of directions, wanted to see friends, family. Um, and now I'm like really buckling down and I've just been staring at this laptop for hours. So this is the part of the night I start to lose my mind. And luckily I do have some dinner plans I'm looking forward to because right now the playoff games Saturday night are happening. So the Ravens are hosting the Texans. It's halftime and I'm purposely not watching because I'm trying to finish my notes before I can like enjoy and watch another game. Halftime uh, is almost over though. So I'm going to tune back in, I think. And then tonight the Packers play at San Francisco. So since that's my team, I am nervous and I'm going to go watch it with a friend, Kaylee Hartung. She's actually the sideline reporter for NBC's broadcast of our Lions game tomorrow. So we'll both be on the sidelines. We are both working the sidelines last week at Arrowhead too. So um, it's just really great having this type of camaraderie. And that's kind of what's on like top of my mind right now. Um, Melissa Stark is also one of the most like heralded, accomplished sideline reporters in the NFL. Um, she's also working the sideline for NBC tomorrow. Also, Stacey Dales and Sarah Walsh are working for NFL Network. They've been here reporting all week, so I've reached out to them and let them know about our plans to see if they want to join. So in theory, I want to get this whole girl gang together of sideline reporters from three different networks, which would be so cool. I look up to those names so much. And just kind of on that note of like camaraderie and sisterhood amongst sideline reporters, I had a really meaningful call this week with someone I respect so much, and it was flattered that she wanted to call me and ask me advice on something was Aditi Kinkabwala. She was 10 years with NFL Network and now has been at CBS for a long time and she's doing some games for Westwood One for the playoffs, including this week she's doing Chiefs Bills with my dad. And that game's supposed to be really cold. She called me to ask how I handled the cold in Kansas City last weekend. And, you know, this is someone who's been in the business forever and has certainly covered some cold games. So I was shocked she was asking me, but turns out our executive producer at Westwood One had told her I did a really good job combating the cold and enunciating through the cold when it's so hard to, like, move your mouth and move your jaw. <laughs> um, so she called to ask about that, which I told her. I was like, there's no magic trick. I just, I just you know, did battery-powered everything. I tried to cover my face when I could. Anyways, um... And then we just ended up talking about the whole business in general. And she's a mom of two. We talked a lot about that. She has a horrifying story when she was working a Cleveland Browns game. Didn't live there. Was just in Cleveland working a Browns game. Pregnant. Seven months pregnant. Went into labor during the game. Had her baby two months early in Cleveland. A you know city she didn't live in. The baby was in the NICU for a long time. She had to stay in Cleveland. Um, and then ultimately had to leave the NICU after a couple weeks and go report at Brown's practice. Um, I just, it's a story like that that makes me question, what would my line be? You know, at what point do you say, no, I'm not going? <laughs> um, it was really great to talk with her and hear her story and get to know her and add her to a list of women I respect in the business so much and add her to a list of women I would consider now a friend in the business and would reach out to with a question she was amazing um, and just gave such good advice about navigating these waters. We found out we had the same agent. I didn't know that. Um, and just how to be a mom and make it work and, you know, how you keep yourself motivated when it feels like 
the much easier thing would be to hang it up. And that's a conversation Sam and I have had a bunch. And, you know, no one's more supportive of me continuing to work than Sam. Man, can you tell that cold brew's hitting? <laughs> I've got so much energy now. Enjoy the rest of the playoff games tonight. I'd love to go downstairs and get, like, a soup and a beer. That sounds really good. <laughs> The story from last week's Chiefs game I don't think I ended up telling. My binder just broke in half. That's how cold it was at my Chiefs game. I was just standing there holding my binder and all of a sudden it cracked. It cracked right off. I was barely touching it and the cold cracked it. Also, the scarf I was wearing completely froze. I could knock on my scarf. Um, cause I was holding it up around my mouth. So I was getting like some moisture and condensation. So yeah, my scarf froze and my binder broke from the cold. It was like minus 28 degrees Fahrenheit wind chill. So that happened. Made it to the stadium. This is kind of up behind the broadcast booth overlooking all of that at Ford Field. Very cool. The Lions snapped the NFL's longest playoff wind route last week in front of a raucous crowd. It reached 133 decibels in here. That's good for the fourth loudest game in NFL history. No doubt it played a factor in last week's one point win over the Rams. Coach Campbell even said that one in the game has it forced LA to burn two timeouts to avoid delay of game penalties. Well, quarterback Baker Mayfield used to play for the Rams. So he asked his old teammates, what was this environment like? They told him it was the loudest thing they had ever heard. So the Buccaneers are preparing for that this week. They pumped in extra noise, practice, turned up the music. They're working on a lot of silent counts. And Baker says they're going to have to plug and play some of their calls. Certainly a challenge. Now, this is a rematch. These two teams played week six. It was Baker Mayfield's worst game of the season and Jared Goff's best game of the season. But no doubt it will be a challenge for these Buccaneers as they're trying to take advantage of the struggling pass defense here with Detroit and try to capitalize on that with this loud crowd that promises they'll be even louder today. Hello, hello. Okay, we are back. I'm in my hotel room. I'm exhausted. I just ran downstairs and had a quick bite. Um, well, not a very quick bite. I was so starving because I barely eat on game days. I had some breakfast this morning at like 8 a.m. and then I didn't eat until uh, 8 p.m. And I was starving and the guy was laughing at me and he kept saying, are more people joining you? I was like, no, this is it for me. Yes, I'm getting appetizer, entree, sides. So that was delicious. And now I'm watching the Chiefs Bills game. Anyways, tonight went really great. The game was really fun. Detroit won. 
It's the first time ever they've won two playoff home games because they don't host playoff games. I mean, this is historic. It's since 1991. It's been 32 years. So they will face the San Francisco 49ers next weekend in San Francisco. I will be watching from London. Actually, no, because it'll probably be at night. I will be sleeping in London. I got so homesick. And of course, it's my last day. Like, this makes sense. But, like, it just really hit me today how much I'm missing Sam and Wolfie. I've been gone way too long and I just feel like really sad. Like I woke up this morning just feeling really sad and I hate that because like when I was working the Chiefs game last week I woke up on the day of the game with a pep in my step so excited and today I just woke up like I'm so grateful to be here. I'm thrilled to be working a divisional playoff game so you know a lot of people don't get to work this late in the season but I still just like I feel like a piece of my body is missing on FaceTime I swear he's like less interested in me than he was at the beginning of the trip anyways I am so so eager to travel home the problem is I can't get out until tomorrow afternoon at like 2 p.m. is my flight Detroit to Chicago and then a little layover in Chicago, and then I get to London. Then tomorrow I have to like kill all this time in the morning, and I'm gonna try to sleep in, work out. I'm just dying to get home with my baby. Okay, got a big travel day tomorrow. I'm going to take a hot bath, even though a bath in a hotel bathroom, especially this one, is not the best. I kinda don't care, that just sounds so good. I'd love to have like an assistant who could just follow me around and just vlog <laughs> so that you guys don't miss a thing. Cause I would love to share all the moments at these games, but it's really hard when I'm pressed for time, working, I'm so focused, I just can't get out my phone and start shooting. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you saw enough, but there's always more. Great night of sleep. I slept till 9.30 a.m. I didn't set an alarm or anything. I was like, let's just, I have nothing to get up for. My flight's not till two. I'm gonna go work out. If I feel so inclined, I might like just go stand outside for a minute. But I am feeling so much more excited today because yesterday went so great. Game was so great. Really like it, it almost sunk in more when I got home, how grateful I am to have been a part of all of it. Um, and just now I'm so excited to get home to my baby. Cannot wait. So the fact that it is a travel day, even though it's going to be a long travel day, just has me so pumped. Sam said that he's asking to see a video of me holding him, singing him, that I put um, on a YouTube short. And so Sam's going to my YouTube and playing in this. I'll try to put the link in here. And he's going, Mama, hold me. Mama singing video. I see. He always says, I see. And I'm like, oh my God, he thinks I'm dead. He thinks I'm dead. And he's like watching old videos to remember me. <gasps> I need to go home. Okay, ready to go. And my final travel day look is basically all oh, that's clean. And some of it, that's a loose definition of clean. So I'm doing my Spanx Perfect Pant, my little Air Jordans. Mostly because they're heavy and I don't want to put them in a bag. I have this cute Calvin Klein sweater. I love this sweater. I think I got this at TJ Maxx like years ago. Navy blazer to kind of incorporate the navy. Plus, I just have this thing about when you fly international and fly business, you should just like, look put together and like, nice. So I always like to wear a blazer when I fly business class, which is just a silly thing in my head, but I always feel better, more presentable, and more put together when flying in the big chair. Laptop, I have some work to do once I get settled in the airport, um, including working on this vlog. Okay, gotta go, let's go.
Weakness comes and goes 